This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. Tonight, we're following breaking news. An officer involved shooting in South St. Louis. This happened just over three hours ago on Alaska Avenue in the Dutchtown neighborhood. Good evening. I'm Mike Bush. I'm Kelly Jackson. St. Louis County Police were in the neighborhood investigating a homicide. That is when they say an officer shot a man. Five on your side, Robert Townsend joins us live from Virginia and Taft in South St. Louis. What's the latest on this, Robert? Hey, Kelly, let me tell you this. Police have been out here on this scene for several hours now, practically all afternoon. Now, about 45 minutes ago, they cleared out on Alaska Avenue. And as I step back, you can see the yellow crime scene tape is still all around this neighborhood. You can see those yellow evidence markers are just down this street. Those officers are still focusing on two vehicles, a silver Ford SUV and a black car that's parked behind that both doors on these two vehicles are open now St. Louis County Police Department spokesperson telling us around 1130 this morning officers with the department's Bureau of Intelligence and Special Response Unit were out here on Alaska Avenue apparently looking again for a recent homicide suspect now about two hours later several gunshots rang out police just told us a man pulled out a gun fired at the officers and then officers fired back. Investigators say the suspect then ran between several houses and more gunshots rang out. The suspect were told was shot more than once. A major here at the scene telling me that none of the officers were hurt. Here's a reaction from a startled neighbor who asked us to not show her face. Oh, it just sounded like kind of like somebody was shooting and then it sounded like somebody was shooting back, you know, like right behind it. So, I don't know, this is normal in this neighborhood, unfortunately. And back out here in this Dutchtown neighborhood, police again telling us that the suspect right now is in critical condition. And as you can see, Virginia Avenue near Taft and Idaho streets is still blocked off as they are still out here looking into all of this. We're live in Dutchtown. I'm Robert Townsend, five on your side. Lead paint contamination in St. Louis Public Schools has been a persistent concern, but today there's major progress to report. Our senior investigative reporter, Paula Fasan, has the latest on a massive project aimed at addressing this issue. Paula. Well, this is a story the I-Team has been covering for years. St. Louis Public Schools are replacing chain link fencing tainted with lead paint, a hazard that's lingered for over half a century. The school system has been hard at work tackling the monumental task of replacing lead painted fencing at 21 schools. Today marks a milestone at Mollencroft Academy becomes the 11th school to undergo this vital renovation. With an investment of $1.7 million, the school system is prioritizing the removal of lead paint, recognizing the dangers it poses when disturbed and inhaled or ingested. We talked with a school spokesperson outside Jefferson Elementary, where the new fencing is already complete. Do families need to be worried that it's taking so long to replace these fences? It's really not taking that long if you consider the magnitude of this project. I don't think there's a, a need to be worried. I mean, uh, you know, we're doing this because we identified the problem and felt like it should be done. Nobody told us we have to do it. We're doing it because it's the right thing to do. And so we obviously are aware of where the problems are. They're being fixed as quickly as we can do it. The work to replace the fences has been going on since last summer. As St. Louis Public Schools presses forward with its initiative to eradicate lead paint, our team will continue to monitor developments closely. If you'd like to get in touch with our I-Team, leave a voice message at 314-444-5231 or email Paula directly at tips at ksdk.com. All calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. A lawsuit recently filed against Rockwood in the Special School District of St. Louis County details the alleged sexual assault of a special needs student during the 2022 school year. Five on your side, Holden Kerwicki is here with more on this disturbing story. Holden. Well, Mike, the 20 page lawsuit alleges that the assault took place on multiple occasions on school property. And to make matters worse, it goes on to state that multiple staff members knew about the abuse but did nothing to stop it. In February of 2022, Eureka High School custodian Robert Smith was arrested on first degree sexual assault charges for inappropriately touching a nonverbal student with autism and Down syndrome on multiple occasions during the 2021 2022 school year. The suit also alleges the abuse took place in front of multiple staff members before being reported a week before Smith's arrest. 
According to Amy Robbins from the Child Advocacy Center of Northeast Missouri, children with disabilities are three to four times more likely to be sexually assaulted than their peers. It's hard because children are so vulnerable and to think of an adult taking advantage of them in that way is certainly heartbreaking. And then also knowing that the long term effects that come from that abuse that they will deal with for a long time to come is, is also hard. Smith is set to stand trial in June. While Rockwood isn't commenting on the lawsuit, a district spokesperson told me they take reports of abuse by staff or students very seriously. I'm not going to stop. And from now on till I don't have a voice anymore, I'm my mother's voice. Tonight, a St. Louis native is trying to raise awareness about domestic violence by talking about the vicious cycle of abuse that led to her mother's death. Lakeisha Mayo's mother was murdered in 2019 and the killer is behind bars for life. Now Mayo wants to be a voice for her mother. Justina Coronel joins us in studio with her story. Kelly, I sat down with Lakia Shumeo as part of our Way Forward series, which focuses on the organizations and the people in our area making an impact. Mayo says the pain she endured has pushed her to find a new way forward and advocate for change. She had a wonderful soul. She um, loved family functions. She loved to be around people. She loved her daughters. Remembering Marcia Johnson for her light. Her daughter, Lakeisha Mayo, knows the darkness her mom faced. We know his background as being abusive to women, and we tried to get, me and my sister tried to get her out of that relationship before it reached to that point because we knew what he was capable of. Johnson was married to Samuel Lee Scott. In 2019, he was arrested and charged with fourth degree domestic assault. While he was in jail, she attained an order of protection against him. One day later, the bail project posted his bail. I got a call around 12.43 a.m. from my now ex-husband telling me everything that transpired with someone finding her in her house. Her mother was brutally beaten and then died. Scott was charged with the murder. He pleaded guilty and is now serving a life sentence. Before the police picked him up, he told my mom, he said, since you want to call the police on me, I might as well finish you off. Be um, when I get out. Mayo wrote a book to honor her mom. It's called The Legacy of Marcia Johnson, Breaking Violence and Generational Curses. I just know she's proud of me because um, domestic violence isn't talked about enough. Beyond the book, she wants to shine a light on the laws. I'm trying to get the laws changed as far as them looking into their background and paperwork before bailing them out of jail. Domestic violence is my main focus right now because I don't want anybody else to end up in the situation that I was in, nor do I want anybody to end up where my mom is now. Now, the bail project did release a statement and said, quote, the bail project exists to resort the presumption of innocence and ensure that it applies equally to all, regardless of how much money one has. Poverty is not a crime, but the murder of Marcia Johnson was. And now Samuel Scott is being held accountable, end quote. Thank you, Justina. An investigation gaining traction more than a month after a man assaulted a woman on Metrolink. What police say took them so long to get the info to the public. It's an invasive species, and one way of getting rid of it is to eat it. The push to put carp on Missouri menus. 